Welcome to the final edition of the Friday Five in the month of May 2019. I'm your host, Jamie Thomas, and I'm here to help you not socially bogey by telling you the five things that you need to know that happened in disc golf this week for when you get out on the course this weekend with your friends. Let's start up in Portland. The inaugural Portland Open happened on the Disc Golf Pro Tour this past weekend at Blue Lake. Blue Lake is a course that's most famously known for that 2014 World Championship playoff between Paul McBeth and Ricky Wysocki, but it was neither of those two that would end up in a playoff this weekend. Let's start in FPO, however, where Paige Pierce picks up her second Disc Golf Pro Tour win, her first since the Jonesboro Open, besting Katrina Allen by two strokes. That two-stroke swing actually happened in the second round of the tournament, where Katrina threw her lowest rated round on tour this season. Paige Pierce, for her part, was a beast on the putting green. Her circle two stats are ridiculous. Check out Smashbox TV because they put a highlight together of a bunch of the stuff from the uh, live stream that happened. And Paige Pierce, great putting. All right, over on the MPO side, it was much more insanity happening because the lead card played kind of passive. And when you play passive on a big arm course, you are going to get passed by big arms like Drew Gibson and Eagle McMahon. Both of those gentlemen came from the chase card to force a playoff in which Drew Gibson picks up his first win on tour. This is definitely the biggest win for Drew, who credited Josh Anton with helping him with his mental game, kind of like Garrett Gerthy did last week after Masters Cup. Uh, it's especially notable because Drew was two strokes back with two holes to play courtesy of missing a 12-foot birdie putt on hole 16 after one of the most impressive drives of the entire weekend. So he was in a literal birdie or die situation and he goes birdie birdie to force the playoff. Simon Lazat had a chance to win down the stretch, but ultimately he was unable to capitalize on it. All right, let's go to number two. We're going to do a whip around and I've got my handy dandy cheat sheet right here. Let's start over on the East Coast of the United States where Paul McBeth beats Chris Dickerson by seven strokes and uh, opened the tournament the two days in May with a 1090 rated round to help propel him to that margin of victory. His wife Hannah Macbeth falls to Elaine King by one stroke in the same event. Over in Europe, it's Lauri Lehtinen, a 979 rated Finn who toppled 12,000 plus rated players, played a 1038 rated tournament, and took home some hardware at the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour Tampere event. On the FPO side of things, it is Henna Blomrus besting Evelina Salonen by seven. And this is Henna's first victory as well as she's played in the couple spots we've seen her so far. So congratulations to both of them. Over in Canada, it's Greg Barsby and Colleen McInnes. In Oklahoma, it was Coda Hatfeld and Jennifer Allen. And down in Florida, it was Dave Feldberg and Ellen Widboom all collecting the dubs on Memorial Day weekend. Okay, number three, does anybody read the journal? The Wall Street Journal, that is. If not, you should definitely check it out because celebrity chef, TV host, and avid disc golfer Andrew Zimmern, along with our very own disc golf strong Seth Muncy, contributed to a great article written about disc golf and how it helps people keep fit and stay in an active lifestyle. Zimmern recounted how disc golf helped him on his road to recovery when he was struggling with getting sober and Seth Muncy provides some valuable insight into how disc golf is a healthy part of an active lifestyle. Okay, speaking of recovery and articles, I want to bring back something that we've done previously, and that is my favorite article up on Ulti World right now. That honor goes to Chris Wickland, who wrote Disc Golf and the Road to Recovery. Through a couple of interviews, Chris talked to people who are using disc golf to recover to help their recovery process as they get sober, as well as for veterans dealing with PTSD. Uh, this was inspired by Ricky Wysocki earlier working with a group called Collective Change, where he hosted a beginner clinic for a bunch of people who are in rehab looking to get into the sport. Personally, I think it's wonderful. I think we should make more content like this. And if you know anybody that is out there suffering from PTSD, from addiction, and needs a healthy thing to get into to help them out, spread the love, evangelize disc golf. Clearly, it works. And finally, the slap, the push, the shove, whatever verb you're using, it was seen around the internet. Adam Hammes getting a little testy after shanking a shot during the second round of the Portland Open 
turned the camera, let's say, back towards the T-pad, and uh, he was roasted online for it quite a bit. And uh, you may have seen Eagle McMahon and Simon Lazat had a little bit of fun with that same gesture at different points throughout the event this weekend when they threw a bad shot, kind of reminding the activity. All in good fun, but we did discuss it on the Upshot this week, so we encourage you to check that out. We have Drew Gibson as a guest, and uh, we discuss what it's like to play with emotion and play with your heart on your sleeve, as well as whether this is really a big deal in the grand scheme of things. All right, that is the Friday Five. We are done with May. We are into June. I hope it is beautiful where you are all playing this weekend. Get out and play. In the meantime, stay tuned to our social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our website, discgolf.ultiworld.com. And next week, when you say TGIF, add one more F to it. Just say, thank God, it's the Friday Five. We'll see you next week. <laughs>